Welcome everyone to Clarkie's Closet, a podcast. And today we look at my fourth musical comedy, Songs from the Bunker. A story about Hitler's doppelganger, when the walls are about to come down on the bunker. The joyous tale of the demise of Adolf and Eva and their dog Blondie. <laughs> well, actually, I can't, I won't tell you too much just now, but uh, there's a twist, a big reveal. And if you go to markclark.com.au, you might actually see uh, the, that reveal. They're all seven or eight minutes of it. I'm not going to tell you right now what it was. I'll let you know when it's coming. Okay, this was put on in 1998 written the year before, as was my custom in the days when I was working at Windsor High School and uh, writing these plays. It took quite a while because I had to write all of the songs, obviously, and then I had to record everything, and I did all of that myself. But Jessica Sempronio provided the female vocals for me, one of my ex-students, lovely voice, which you will hear in this podcast. But all of the songs I've chosen for you today are really just ones that I like. I think I've chosen about half a dozen songs. The show should go about half an hour as it normally does. But yeah, I think you'll enjoy this. The idea came to me that I could write a play taking the mickey out of Hitler, which is always good fun and always a pretty easy target, I guess, isn't it? He certainly looked like something and he certainly made a few waves in world history. I noticed that he's called great occasionally, and I guess he was in terms of history, but he certainly wasn't a very nice guy. Well, you know, he loved his dog until he poisoned it. Uh, anyway, that that aside, let me tell you a little bit about songs from the bunker. I originally had the idea of having Hitler on stage for a couple of hours, and I thought, well, we don't want to be looking at swastikas. Nobody wants to be watching Hitler on stage. And then one night, when I was in a Friday night frame of mind, if you know what I mean, I suddenly had it. It was Hitler's doppelganger. It wasn't Hitler at all. And instead of swastikas, we had little smileys with the uh, Ghostbusters little uh, line through them, you know. And, uh, yeah, everyone was in there, even the Nazis who weren't in there. I don't think Himmler was, but he he's in the show. So that tells you what sort of a show this is. And it's really – it's sort of insp- – it was actually inspired by the producers, written by Mel Brooks, of course, which won uh, the Oscar in 1970 for – for Best Picture, I think I'm right in saying. It certainly won the Oscar. And, uh, yeah, uh, that gave me the idea, and I thought, yeah, let, let's do something around Hitler. That, that'd be fun. So I made it in uh, April 30, 31, 1945, when the Ruskies are about to beat down the door to the bunker, and Hitler's double is put in to take the fall for the big guy. And his two astrologers are with him, dressed as astrologers, as you can imagine, and the three of them are Jewish. It's not mentioned in the entire play that they are Jewish, but they're from New York and they talk like this. And they're panicking, of course, because everybody's out to get them. So our first song, the one that I'm going to play for you first, is the opening song. If you can imagine sitting in the audience, curtains pull back and what do they reveal? But who we think is Adolf Hitler singing you this next song, which is Oi Vey, Oi Vey. They, I what a day, I what a day I am having. I, they, I such a day, I such a day have I had. First Herman tells me we're losing the war. I said, losing the war, could we call it a draw? Next Heinrich says there's a man at the door Selling autographed pictures of Winston Churchill Oi, they, I've had a day I've had a day I am having Oi, they, I such a day I such a day have I had My astrologers tell me that I should stay in Of course I'll stay in They are bombing Berlin One of them said avoid poison today And don't plan a vacation For this they get paid Oi, they I want a day I want a day I am having 
She's tired of living in sin With the ways of always been Who's had time for sin So Joseph, I got him to buy me a ring It cost 200 Deutschmarks Plus packed my life But oi, hey Oi, what a day Oi, what a day I am having Oi, hey Oi, such a day Oi, such a day have I had Goebel's six daughters are lazy and rude His wife is too Tell me what should I do? Between them and curring Their eating the food And their drinking the schnapps Enough already I Hey I what a day I what a day I am having Listen oi Hey Oi such a day such a day have I had My generals want a new powerful bomb But the bombs that they ask for would weigh kilotons My scientists tell me they can't split the atom Einstein said it come But his wife won't let him boy Play I want a day I want a day I am having Listen on Such a day have I had. Hey, hey. Yeah, so uh, that uh, was rather a, an incongruous start, I thought. And then, of course, he explains that there's not a, an ounce of Schickelgruber in him. He is not Hitler. And he tells the story about how he and his two brothers were in a hot air balloon when they blew onto Gestapo headquarters and were put in cold storage in case one day the Nazis were losing the war, which, of course, they are now. I saw a show about the bunker. I was, you know, I imagined a bunker as probably most people do, is just dirt walls with, you know, planks holding them up. But of course, I was completely wrong about that. This uh, SBS uh, show, this show about the bunker, showed it to be multi leveled and very sophisticated with plenty of food and, and grog and what have you. It sort of seemed like the Nazis were having a party, a Nazi party, you might call it, boom, boom, which is one of the gags from the show. Goering was on. <laughs> He, he's not in the show. I wish I'd known this at the time, but um, Goering was actually into heroin, you know, morphine. So he'd be at the party meetings, basically zonked out. Hitler was on ice pretty well. He was on he was on um, the heavy stuff, and people think that's maybe why he went crazy rather than because he was losing the war. Maybe he just went nuts because he was on bloody high levels of ephedrine or whatever he was on. You can imagine what those meetings were like, can't you? Anyway, that aside, let's talk about the show. Well, the next thing we do, once we know what's going on in the story, is we meet the guards and the daughters, who, of course, become our chorus. And the daughters, I didn't name them for their real names, but I did see them on this show that was very, very sad, actually. This is what you call black comedy, I guess, because all of the girls, all six of them, Goebbels had poisoned them all, and there they were dead, poor little things. So I thought, well, there's my chorus. And much the same as Mel Brooks goes, that's our Hitler in the movie, The Producers. And so I had my chorus. I had six SS guards and I had six of Goebbels' daughters. And they come in and they sing this song to introduce their characters. It's called Guards and Daughters. Was conceived in 23 the year my Kampf was written. I read that book when I was 10 and met it I was smitten. I joined the Hitler Youth the year they burned on German books. Oh, with the big thick aisle in 39 invaded Poland's borders. Now six years on I'm underground with six of Goebbels' daughters. And with the big thick aisle in 39 invaded Poland's borders. For we are Hitler's SS guards. Oh, we are Goebbels' daughters. I was born for Lebensraum, my father told me so And 
other folk must bear the yoke of Deutschland as she grows. I cheat the German troops as they obliterated foes. I'm in the big zig heil, lived in style all throughout the voyages, and flirted mid the assets for I'm fond of Goebbels' daughters. I'm in the big zig heil, lived in style all throughout the voyages, but we are Hitler's SS girls. Oh, we are Goebbels' daughters. Things aren't going quite as well as I had hoped they would In fact, to be quite honest, things aren't looking all that good The Allied tanks are pushing at the outskirts of Berlin And if they win, they will budge in and there will be no quarter For any of the SS guards Of all of Goebbels' daughters And, and if they win, they will budge in and there will be no quarter For any of the SS guards Well, we've enjoyed the trimmings and the fame of all the Warsaw. Sometimes in life it's better if one travels incognito. So if at last it comes to pass, the Allies win the war. Meet a great big smile, no thick house. We were just obeying orders. And we ain't Hitler's SS girls. And we ain't Goebbels' daughters. So, so just in case there's video and glazer, they report us. We ain't Hitler's SS girls. And we ain't Goebbels' daughters. Yes, and much hilarity is had at the expense of the Nazis. It's not exactly what you'd call real life. There's an Australian Nazi in there, and everybody thinks he's Austrian, which is the which is the odd thing. Americans often. I was in America at one stage back in 1984 when I was in my middle twenties, and the lady I was talking to in uh, in New Orleans, I told her I was Australian, and she pointed to a painting that she was doing, and it was snow everywhere. And she said, oh, this must remind you of your home. And I didn't want to be rude. So I said, yeah, we we have snowfields, but not a lot in Australia. Let me tell you. Anyway, everyone thinks he's Austrian, but he's not Austrian. He's Australian. And he, he, of course, causes trouble towards the end. But at this point in time, everyone's eating and drinking and carrying on. And Eva Braun and, and Hitler are getting on very well. Oh, yes, I almost forgot. One of the characters in the story was actually Hans, the paper boy from The Sound of Music. And every time anybody mentions one of the lines from The Sound of Music, he bursts into song. And of course, over a period of time, everybody gets sick and tired of him. So I just thought I'd better mention that. So anyway, by the end of Act One, we have Goebbels, Himmler and Goering singing this next song to finish off the act. And it's called The Luftwaffe Rock. That you got. They put their own bird in Tokyo, axis on top. We gonna stuck up in the Europe, gonna blitz Greek till we drop. We gonna push up into Asia till our fans are gonna pop. To the League of Nations We ain't gonna sit here like a shag on a rock We want an army and a navy and an air force to do the Luftwaffe Rock We gonna do the Luftwaffe Rock Now baby, we don't give a measure Schmidt for all that you got We do the Luftwaffe Rock Administration isn't big on reconciliation Western Europe's going into liquidation We show you longer standard when we crash your place Cause we need more space for the Aryan super race Luftwaffe Rock, we gonna do the Luftwaffe Rock We put the rumble in Tokyo, access on top and do the Don't feel you have to wait for an invitation Let's all get together for some mass extermination A thousand years, I can't hear the happening roar 
Yes, this brings us to the beginning of Act 2, where Eva is sitting on a chair in the middle of the stage, surrounded at her feet by all of Goebbels' daughters, who are saying, Tell us, tell us, Eva, how you met Sofiora. And she does tell them in this next song, which is an... I feel a bit sorry for Jessica singing this, because it was such a high, high note she has to hit, but she does it extremely well. And I think the song is reasonably funny. I uh, hope you do too. This is called Deutschland or Deutschland. Of course, Hitler is not really Hitler. His name is Epstein Pearl. To any of you who have ever had a little baby, you might know that they're the things that come up on their teeth. Epstein's pearls uh, come up on the, not the teeth, they don't have teeth, do they? When, they, when they're first born, they bite you otherwise, and it will be very unpleasant if breastfeeding. But I digress. The uh, Epstein's pearls, uh, that's what they're called, those little uh, little pearl-like substances that grow on the gums of children. Just a little fact you can impress members of the opposite sex with when you're at parties. I don't suppose you know what an Epstein's pearl is, do you? Anyway, his name's Epstein Pearl. He's got his two brothers, Jaime and Leon, the astrologers, and he's had his zoological nuptials with Eva by this stage. He's, uh, he's, I think, I think I'm right in saying that. He certainly goes off stage to have his nuptials with Eva. 
prior to the Russians beating down the door and dragging him out to be sent down to the Nuremberg trials to be sported around like a, a trophy and uh, ridiculed and then executed summarily. But he's getting worried by now and he's but he's about to say, listen, don't worry. Look, maybe the Russians will, will, will like you. Maybe they might. I don't know. When they come here, they might, uh, they might bring, it might be a party. And this song is called uh, Better by Some Balloons. Come on now, Hitler, don't you worry. I really wouldn't worry what they'll do to you. They probably won't be in a hurry The British may come and set you free Possibly stay for tea Come on now, Hitler, don't be gloomy We really can't presume what they will do to you They'll probably be here pretty soon The English and American troops Probably all admire you The Russians may throw a party with booze Hey, better buy some balloons Of course I could be wrong they may come crashing down the door soon You may be set upon By some violent and angry man And they might tie you up Parade you around the streets of Berlin Like a trophy cup Then they'll take you down the new one But for what ridicule, hey Come on now, Hitler, don't you worry I really wouldn't worry what they'll do to you They'll probably be here pretty soon English and American troops They probably all admire you The Russians may throw a party with booze Hey, better buy some balloons Of course I could be wrong They may come crashing down your door soon You may be set upon By some violent and angry man And they might tie you up Parade you around the streets of Berlin Like a trophy cup But the world better do, hey Come on now, Hitler, don't be gloomy We really can't begin what they will do to you They'll probably be here pretty soon The English and American troops They probably all admire you The Russians may throw a party with booze Hey, better buy some balloons The English and American troops They probably all admire you The Russians may throw a party So at this stage, we've managed to gather everybody on stage. We're getting towards the end now, and this is the reveal. So close your ears if you don't want to know what happens. But it turns out that all of the Nazis that have been trying to get Hitler and eventually all hold a gun on him are not, in fact, Nazis at all. But they take all their gear off and reveal their underclothing, which is... They are the cast of The Sound of Music, of course. And one by one, they introduce themselves and say who they were in that particular show. And he says, listen, you think I really am Hitler? And they say, who else would you be? To which he replies, well, just about anybody else right now. And they reveal themselves. And then he says, look, I'm not really Hitler. And they think, yeah, well, actually, he doesn't really sound like the Fuhrer, etc., etc. And they realize that he is no longer Hitler and they can rejoice and then they all sing a song at the end. Now, this last song I'm going to play for you today is called He Should Never Have Invaded Poland. My son went to Germany and was telling uh, the German young men that, and they all thought it was bloody hilarious, which is a shame, not because they found it hilarious. It's a shame because the group through whom I put my music on Spotify and iTunes and all that sort of thing were not allowed to put this one up because apparently iTunes have got a policy, nothing to do with Hitler, even if it's satirical. So, alas, Songs from the Bunker is not up. But I have got three songs on my website, markclark.com.au, if you'd like to have a listen. And if you go to videos, you can see this reveal when everybody turns out to be from the cast of The Sound of Music, Windsor High School, 1998. So here we are with the final song, He Should Never 
have invaded Poland. He should never have invaded Poland. That was his mistake. The Rhineland ended peacefully and the Anschluss was okay. The Sudetenland was well in hand. Slovakia was great. But he should never have invaded Poland. That was his mistake. The policy of appeasement was a godsend, that's for sure. Peace in our time, this Chamberlain's line as I prepared for war. Who'd have thought those spineless fools would mobilize at all? I should have never have invaded Poland, just the Danzig corridor. He should never have invaded Poland, that was his mistake. The Rhineland ended peacefully, the Anschluss was okay. The Sudetenland was well in hand. Slovakia was great. But he should never have invaded Poland, that was his mistake. At a meeting of our generals in 1938, you told us we would be at war before the new decade. We told you we weren't ready, but you said you couldn't wait. You should have never have invaded Poland. Well, not then at any rate. He should never have invaded Poland. That was his mistake. The Rhineland ended peacefully. The Anschluss was okay. The Sudetenland was well in hand. Slovakia was great. But he should never have invaded Poland. That was his mistake. You should never have invaded Russia. The effort was too great. And helping Mussolini helped your forces dissipate. You should have never have declared a war upon the USA. And you should never have invaded Poland. That was your first mistake. You should never have invaded Poland. That was his mistake. The Rhineland ended peacefully. The Anschluss was okay. The Sudetenland was well in hand. Slovakia was great. But he should never have invaded Poland. And that brings us to the end of today's podcast. Uh, Songs from the Bunker, incidentally, was the very first play to ever play at Windsor High School's New Hall in 1998. The three prior shows, Pirates, Parrots and Penguins, Ponsonby's Castle and The God Show, and if you're interested in those and you missed those podcasts, you can go back and have a listen to those. They were played at the Richmond School of Arts out here in the Hawkesbury of New South Wales. Not far from Currajong, if you need a reference point. Uh, any of you people overseas that might be listening to this, it's in Sid, just out of Sydney, on the edge of Sydney, 70 or 80 k's out of Sydney. I live in Bowen Mountain, which is beautiful. We look across the whole Hawkesbury, which, as I speak, is threatened yet again by floods. So I hope everybody down there is, is well and gets through this fourth flood. Okay. Okay, everybody. Well, it's been great being with you. Next week is going to be show number five, musical number five, and that is Wayne Kerr High. We're going to take you to Wayne Kerr High. I'll tell you more about that next week. Until then, keep well. Bye-bye. If you'd like to have a listen to some other songs, and if you'd like to read some of my screenplays and some of my novels and ha- even have a listen to them they're all on markclark.com.au see you next time